I said, you know, we'd be starting the show, but Laurel's coming to get her CD. But she got. So that's one of the advantages of when it's not really a totally full house is you can move during the show and find a seat. Just don't wait between songs because you don't want to disturb what's going on. But Hey, all those people that are out there watching right now, you're always wondering why when we say we start at 8, we don't start at 8. We do. We start at the far side of 8 p.m. sharp, which again, we're doing quite well. We're about 20 after 8, which means we haven't reached the 829 number. See, once you're at 829, you're so close to 8.30 that you got to say it's an 8.30 show. But this is not. This is the far side of 8 p.m. sharp. And so we are, in fact, in time, on time once again. As we're getting ready tonight, this is one of those. It's a Monday night, so it's a hard night to sell. But the people that are here and the people that are watching tonight are going to have the advantage of understanding how music can illuminate um, emotions and, and, and how vibrations of, well, in this case, Non -fret, two non-fretted instruments. When you have a stand-up bass working with a harp, like it's just, well, the imagination will run wild. And before the imagination runs wild, you'll actually have the opportunity to hear it. And you'll let your imagination run with it at the same time. It's kind of a dual thing. Uh, Dilem, De Diem. Um, I saw her at Folk Alliance. She was there. And anyone who travels around, I was just talking with with Eric about that. Anyone who, who um, takes a, uh, a harp into the realm of entertainment um, and out onto the forefront, other than playing at weddings, playing at funerals, or whatever else you do, you sit in the front. But when you take it to a mainstay instrument out front and actually move the world with it, it's kind of neat. Uh, it's kind of uh, the person behind it believes in, in what it can do and in how it can illuminate the world, as you can see on her sign. And there's all sorts of, as I said, things that you're going to experience tonight, which are all very well worth it. Her having um, uh, the accompanist that she has tonight, well, between it all, we're just in for a treat. Let's get them on the board, please. I'll put you on the stage. DM, let's give them a warm welcome as they come to the stage and take us on that journey. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you all for coming. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna play to the full house that is here. All these invisible people, and the the flesh and blood people. Are are the invisible people invisible people less important than the visible people? When I, when I come out to perform, I love to ask an audience what brought you out of your home into the rain to come here tonight. What do you expect a night of live music will give you? Joy. Joy. Shelter. Shelter. Creativity. Creativity. All worthy reasons to leave the cozy nest and come out into this um, beautiful space, this fun, eclectic, creative space. When I perform, it is my wish that there be at least one moment, at least one moment where you get what you came here for. I'm learning to recognize the muse when she comes knocking at my door. I'm learning to greet the shifting faces I see through the peephole of possibility. I'm learning to run right out the door, shoeless, coatless, in the arms of inspiration. I'm learning to swing dull days around by the tail and shake out the corners of the rumpled cloth covering the mundane to grab the streaming coattails of those multi-dimensional moments that rise right up off the flat page of living. Moments when I am lifted lightly to the stars. To see broad patterns, brush strokes of the divine on the terrain I've been struggling through, scrambling blindfolded up hillsides thick with revelation. 
I'm learning that the fragile doorway of the muse is as impersonal as it is obvious and won't wait for convenience but needs boldness, a rushing freedom and acceptance. Inspiration needs to be tumbled through. Like a dusty acrobat in a threadbare leotard springing through a burning door. ridiculous jester humoring the whims of being only in rushing headlong heart strong into living can gemstones be wrought from rock any stony flatness of this worn earth pebble is a joke to the tumbling jester who holds every minute as pure diamond Thank you.
How many of you have uh, seen Life Harbor? Yeah, excellent. Lots of times. Uh, not at a funeral or a wedding. Though, yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, only at weddings and funerals? Folk festival, okay, great. Wonderful. Let's do um, want to, want to.
Do you ever have the experience of waking up in the middle of the night with a really, really good idea? And it's like so obvious, this idea, that you don't need to wake up enough to write it down. You're sure you'll remember it in the morning. This is a common experience. Do, do any of you actually wake up enough to write it down? Oh, good. I admire you. <laughs> it's a good practice. Um, I'd like to share a poem with you that came out of an experience like that. There was a poem uh, that came and nudged me, and I thought I was too busy to write it. But I made notes. I thought, I'll catch this poem, I'll make some notes, and later on, when I have time, I will, I will write this poem. Well, I wrote down the notes, and then sometime later I came upon the notes, and I could remember the moment. I could remember the feeling of the poem. But the notes were like a connect the dot without any numbers. They made no sense at all. It was like I was standing on the threshold of a room, and I couldn't walk in, but I could sort of feel what was in the room. I couldn't see it, and I couldn't walk in the room. Um, but this poem came instead. When the poem you don't write moves through you. When the poem you don't write moves through you. Oh, like lightning. Or like the slow ripple that turns glassy water into a thousand undulating dancers, or maybe wordlessly. In the blue, blue language of fast moving cloud formations, is it really any less tangible than the poem that makes it to the page? Even her unsung symphony of meter and motion is the muse moving through you. Like a costumed, a stilt dancer trailing bright silk, stalking with exaggerated footsteps through herds of tightly lipped people wearing bus faces. She is the wordless wisdom written between the lines of any fragment of poetry, articulation of a new synapse firing. She is a landless and crownless pioneer blazing a new trail along familiar neural pathways. Perhaps the unpenned poem flies more freely than her written, spoken counterpart. Maybe she dives directly into our pulsing hearts, becomes our life stream dream, imprints her textless text right there, and moves us to listen to the inaudible, to hear the unspoken, to create creation in the unique container shaped just like us, just like now. With the deep ease of knowing that the poem percolating through you changes you, metamorphoses your very DNA with the print of her tiny invisible hands shaping your heart speak forever. And in this way, lives on even without words, when the poem you don't write moves through you.
to imagine um, the sounds traveling out from us here. Big waves that travel out, and as they leave, 
this proximity, they get smaller and smaller, but they don't really disappear. They just get smaller and smaller and smaller and turn into these microscopic little spirals. And they land in the trees. The trees breathe them in. And then we walk under the trees and we breathe them in. And we sing. And the sound comes out, big wave, big wave, smaller and smaller, becomes a microscopic, tiny little spiral, and lands in the ocean. Sinks down, and a fish comes along and eats the little microscopic spiral, breathes it in. And then somebody fishes the fish and serves it for dinner. We eat it, and we sing. And the sound comes out, great big wave, great big wave, smaller and smaller, becomes a microscopic, tiny little spiral and lands on the leaf of an apple tree. Goes into the trunk, down into the roots, and over generations, hangs out down underground. And then one spring, this little spiral comes up the trunk again, out into the tip of a branch and becomes a blossom which becomes a great big red apple. And your great grandchild comes along, picks the apple, takes a bite, and sings.
here. I almost caught you. <laughs> I was going to try and get a poem in there before you clapped. <laughs> here on the path, I lie down. With the foliage and bugs, pebbles and petals. Friendly rocks nudge my ribs with a stoic punchline only they can hear. Looking up, I learn how to dance by watching leafy branches bend and weave with jazz hands above me. The open azure of the only sky I've ever known comforts me by pretending to be limitless, but I know if I rose up too high, I'd bounce off a of blue that hue, so I lie down here. Here on the path, Time cradles me, decorates me with lines, creases, and shadows. Hangs dense evidence of various events along my listing spine, bony shoulders, knees, and fingers. The ageless surely bathe their souls by laying each precious vertebrae down like a string of pearls into the mossy, musky sponge of the forest floor and wash their eternal eyes in the blue, blue of the kind of sky that peaks in primordial patterns from between bowing branches and whispering leaves here on the path. As I walk here, I lay down armor I don't remember ever picking up. Mandala faces of thistle buds wink at me companionably but tenderly protect their new growth with wicked, merciless spines. Able vegetables, generous and tall, behind a wall of stringy toughness that peels away easy with the right touch, I know how the juicy center of her spring stalks can burst like wild, bitter celery between my teeth. We are culinary conspirators nodding at each other, knowing each other inside out here on the path. As I walk here, I want my clumsy human footsteps to be a perfect dance. I want to busy my hands, offering ovations to every quiet bit of wonder that lies unseen underfoot. Beauty passes like liquid through my palms, and I urgently grip, knead, press every disparate bit of grace into something sparkly, like a memory. Something I can finally remember when I slow my lungs to practice forest breathing. My inhale tunnels deep, deep into the Earth's magnetic middle, and I exhale up, up beyond the stars. One real breath, at least, as I walk here. Never alone? Never alone?
let's do Love It All. Yes. 
Do you all need a break? How long has it been? Has it been a long time? It's been 49 minutes already. That's actually time for a break. Yeah. Well, let's do a little break. Um, and um, there is this beautiful image on the back. You'll find these uh, QR codes. And what you do with those is you open up your camera, especially if you have an iPhone. I think it doesn't work with the other phones. Um, you open up your camera, and you don't have to take a picture. You just go onto the, onto the um, image, and it opens a link. And then you can come find me on social media. So I'd really appreciate if you can come and find me and follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and check out my album on Spotify, and uh, my website, sign up for my email thing. Uh, it's a very, very lovely way to support artists. Um, it doesn't cost you anything, and it helps us to be able to get grant money if we have, uh, if it's evident that people care about what we're doing, we're more likely to, you know, get the support for our creative endeavors. So I would really appreciate your support in that way. Um, there's these little cards. You're welcome to take them or just use them here if you like. Um, and then also over on the merch table, I have these little um, poem magnets. And you're all welcome to choose one. There's seven different uh, magnets. And they have little um, bits of quotes, quotes from my poetry and um, lyrics. So choose one. Um, if you want more, they're for sale. And there's also an album over there that came out in September. Oliver's bass playing is all over that album. So it's uh, bass, harp. Um, I do vocals, and then I do also different harmony vocals on the album. And we have percussion as well. There's a jazzy kit with brushes and cymbals and also udu. Do you know the udu? Um, I think it's uh, African. I don't really remember, but it's a um, it's a clay drum. It's a beautiful um, kind of looks like a um, an urn or something. Like it's a round clay drum that has an open oh, an open end there, and it has a circle cut out. So it's a, it's got an opening here, so you can make these um, bo boink kind of sounds, these boink like watery kind of tension sounds, and lots of finger percussion happens on it. Really um, like a tabla kind of like with all those busy percussive, fingery notes. So yeah, check out the album. Um, yeah, thanks for coming out. So we'll do, we'll do another set of music. We'll just take a little break and let you move around and stretch your legs, and then we'll play you some more. Thank you. <laughs> OK, we'll just appreciate the purse. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, I'm going to start us back in with a, a cover song. This is a Anthem by Leonard Cohen. Thank you. 
Thank you. Let's welcome Oliver Swain back to the stage.
golden cloak of bones. winter night so it's not really winter anymore and we're not calling winter in with this song we're just celebrating that it has passed this is winter night
trying to remember what else I play. We've got Mythmaker. We are myth makers. We are myth makers. We are underneath it all, submerged in a stream of stories. Carried along in rip tide currents of mental images that fly by behind our eyes, this tumbling torrent is the template we draw form from. Our daily life rises dripping out of this rushing mythic river. Our dreams gestate, take shape within the waters of this place, but like fish born swimming, we do not know how the river wets our dreams. We just drink it in with eternal thirst. Always thirsty for themes patterns, plots. Thirsty for the mythos that drives our unbidden rhythms, we need metaphor like manna to feed our inner worlds, and we grasp at myth offered like a babe on her mama's breast. Turning on our laptops, our backlit screens, we are drinking from a soiled stream that cannot fill us but leaves us starving, empty, even as our bellies expand, gulping in glossy paper, perfect images, cramming ourselves with gritty handfuls of compare, compare, despair, not good enough, not new enough, more, more, gorging on images of gore. ourselves with the shock of human neglect, disrespect, drowning in a sea of external gratification where no hero can rise above her shadow or face her challenges because she wears the wrong mascara. Her shoes are too cheap, and her car is not a true reflection of her ultimate life values. Besides, since even the most celebrated, venerated female form betrays her own beauty by being stretched hollow over a Photoshop template of reality until inhuman plastic proportions are achieved. How can her own imperfect beauty be believed? Turn off the tap. Turn the tides, turn the tables that spin this media ride, myth maker, take an image bath. A story sabbatical. Purge the urge to media medicate. Make conscious the myths that carry you in their current. And from the stream that moves behind your eyes, go fishing. For translucent scales, balance on the edge, dive in. Swim into the darkest, most cavernous reaches, revel in the brightest, bluest, bubbliest lagoons, and tell me, tell us all. Tell us over and over again with your true voice, human voice, raw and shining wild voice, tender blossom, unfurling voice. Tell us, Mythmaker, what do you see? What do you see in the rushing white water river behind your eyes? We are both born from and are birthing this river.
You make that one so fun. You. <laughs>
Thank you. That was fun. That was the first time we've done that together. What have we got in the back pocket here? Do we do love poetry? We have not done love poetry. I think this is the last one. It's good to end on a love note.
<laughs> Oliver Swain. <laughs> thank you so much for coming out, and thank you, Duncan Shore, for host hosting us tonight. Uh, lovely sound, lovely venue, and precious, precious audience. Thank you so much. Thank you.